the door? Did you check the lock? Did I know from the outside? Yeah, just kind of feel it. There you go. Yeah. Because Allison is stuck somewhere, so she's on her way. on the ending. One, two, three. Wow, that was really good. Good morning, Allison. Did you get stuck on 34? We've heard about the 34 today. Uh, so I thought, I thought that was really good. I thought in particularly the beginning, uh, how you gave every entrance, especially those first four entrances, really great eye contact and cues. No, it was, it was really strong. The impulse of will there was, was, was really good. Uh, let's do the ending. Uh, when do you think you want to go into a subdivision? You probably went earlier than you want. Um, I, why don't you think when? Secundum ve, secundum ve, tu. Maybe, maybe not go into the, the uh, subdivision until the penultimate measure, right? Or can we all start with, start with the bass and alto in measure number 44? And uh, have the, sopra the soprano and the tenor come in at 45. Stay in two right here. Right at 45? Okay, okay. okay. 40, 44. The alto and bass at 44, and then tenor and soprano can come in later. Okay. So um, I actually have this question for when I was practicing. Yeah. If you're going to enter on the end of something, we, we've been learning that we prep like basically the opposite direction of where we're going to do it, but like that's upbeat, so. 
Right. So, you know, two is kind of complicated because you don't do a lot in two, right? And, and by the way, I loved your gesture at the beginning. You kind of did circles. It wasn't really a gesture. I think that's really effective for this piece. And I mean, you weren't you weren't too obsessed with like one and two and. Yeah, I'm trying to do another gesture since last time. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, it, you know, it's it's one of those things that if you try to get out of the gesture, then the teacher says, "Well, boy, you just sound look like you're just not doing." You know what I mean? And and but I thought what you did really worked. And and so, so what you what you want to do here is you want to put your hand on one and you just want to lift it and go. One second. So you just rebound to your right and we'll come in if you go and second. And I think particularly on starting people, if we can see where that is, a little bit of kind of pattern there kind of goes a long way in terms of us feeling feeling that. Okay. Try that. So right above one and just drop it and, and then rebound to the right. Yeah, so now remember what we're going to do is we're going to work on the subdivision on the penultimate measure. Mm -hmm. And then so when you get the verbum in the soprano, uh, tenor, and bass, verbum, and just go to your left and show a four pattern. Go verbum to. And so again, you know, uh, I'm big into not always showing pattern, but I think we show pattern when it shows people what they need to know to be effective. And I think these, these when, we're, when we're being indeterminate, like in these kind of moments, that's really, really effective, as opposed to just making some sort of, sort of vesture. So one second, one second, one second, one to the left, hold. Does that make sense, what I've said? Yeah. And you're going to have complete control of that. It, it'll be honestly the sort of thing that you would never have to rehearse in a million years. Like, except singing it. That's the rehearsal, not talking. Yeah, try it again. Uh, 40, 44? Secundum <laughs> Nice. It was clear to us, but I think you could give us a little more prep for um. Right? Prep so, what I mean by that is, in order for us to know where um happens, you just need to lift higher in the air. So, verbum tu. Oh, okay. Right? Verbum tu. Yeah, do that. Okay. From 44 again? Yeah, same spot. Ah, so let's prep the ending then again. So, so more prep, meaning more time where we go, and now. That's what prep means is, and now. And is, if you can say while well, you're moving your arm, and now, that meant we all had enough time to go. Now. Try it again. Here we go. Secundum. So, you're, so really, it's all about these preps, isn't it? To show us what, what happens. Secundum. really good and you kind of saw that a little bit on the Brahms last year where I learned I just had to give the choir more prep to be able to to do the the kind of articulation we wanted which was gentle and not accented or sudden or surprising good one two three <laughs> Thank you.
Nice. One, two, three. Yeah, well done. So do you notice he went into four after the return from the, the in one, three part? And that's a, that's a good way to handle that. And I think it's probably a smart way to handle it for him because his tempo was pretty slow on the piece. That wasn't a bad tempo, but it was probably on the slower side. Yeah. And it's harder to control the two. Yes. Uh, and, and I, you know, you stuck with the two almost all the way through. I really and tried. I think we could follow it really clearly. I, I would say that there was kind of a robotic quality to your gesture a little bit which isn't great, but it was clear and we could follow it. And so it's hard to say the word robotic in a positive way to a conductor. <laughs> uh, but, but I mean, we could kind of tell that it was kind of, right? And so I think the, the reason why it felt a little robotic was because when you came down, first of all, I mean, you, I think your hand position was good, sometimes a little bit claw-like, but that was because you were kind of trying to control it. And your the elbow was good and the spacing was great. I mean, so all these things were really great. I mean, you really checked off the boxes in terms of, of those things. So that's awesome. I'm not damning with faint praise. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's really great. I think that when you come down a little slow, it kind of sets up that. So yeah. if your tempo is slower, it means you come down later. That's yeah. not necessarily something that you would have understood. So one, so once you start to come down, uh, John Alexander from Canada used to say that the hand must follow the rate of, of um, in order for it to be predictive, that must follow the rate of gravity. I don't actually think that's true, but I think that there is a, a, a rate of fall which humans look at it and know what it's gonna happen. If it goes faster than that, we can't predict it. If it goes slower than that, then right, and so one, so So to go that slow, you probably need to come down later yeah. than normally would. Yeah, when when I'm not thinking about the next motion, I'm like sitting there one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, you were coming down after four. One, two, three, four, one. T four yeah. one. So I think the subdivision you're showing there is not one and, but one and two and one and two and, which is okay. Like, and, and none of this has rules, right? Yeah. Except can people follow it, right? So let's try again. Maybe take it a little quicker. I think it'll be easier for if you take it quicker. From the top? Yeah, unless you just love that tempo. And you're I, like, I'm not married to it. Okay. I think, I think historically, it's on the slow side. Yeah, and keep the one, two, three, keep the one, two, three, four thing going. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then when the hand falls, think about it as falling. Okay. Like don't control it. Don't go and and but just one, two, two, ton. And so it falls with natural weight. Okay. Which is what I would say rather than the rate of gravity. Because I don't know what the rate of gravity is, but if you but that's pretty fast, right? I, anyway, nobody cares. I mean, it's one of those kind of philosophical things. I think just letting it fall. Yeah, try it again. Fall, 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 fall. fall. Yeah. So it is a little quicker, but easier to follow, right? Yeah, and, and you see what I'm talking about, the fall? And, and, and what's that on the, what, the fall? The fall of the moon. What's the movie where they go in the dream state? Interstellar. Inter 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 wait, wait. Inter yeah, let's go get coffee. Whatever it was, I don't care. Inception. 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 You know what, we were close. Yeah. Anyway, suddenly I had an in Inception kind of moment there. What if this class isn't real? I need this credit. <laughs> Wait, if this happens in a dream, do you still get credit? I, I, God, if this is all a dream, then I hope so. <laughs> okay, so does that make sense? Yeah. Does it feel a little less like you are? It feels oh. much more natural. Right. So I felt. So I think one of the judgments you can make as a conductor is that if you don't feel natural in front, then you're probably not looking natural. Right. Like if you're kind of like, uh, oh my God, right? And, and it needs to feel natural to you physically in order for people to be 
to see it as predictive. Mm -hmm. and, and predictiveness is one key ingredient that we always deal with. If you don't look predictive, we don't know where the next beat is, we don't know what you're doing, right? Predict predictiveness is, 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 in, is the beginning of the gold standard in conducting. It's still not artistry. I thought that you did some things with your left hand which were very sophisticated, which were really, really good. Yeah, I mean, you clearly practiced it, and it was natural, it was predictive, we knew what it meant, it was all those things. Really nice job. You wanna do the last, let practice the uh, cutoff the, the at the end? end? Okay. Yeah. What would you like to see different? Need more prep. Okay. Um, it's the hardest thing for young conductors to understand how much prep a cutoff needs. Coming out of yeah, the let's, yeah, out of the three, two, yeah, that would be great. That second. Try it in two now that you're a little quicker. Yeah, so do the last part of add, go. So you get there and you go, okay, we're here. And then you lift. See how long that is? Yeah, it's yeah. like, and off. It's not, and off. It's, yeah. Want to try one more time? Yes. chord and go even more watch me and if you do this y'all everybody at and you get that in and we want it to be okay. right try the ending yeah last note Hear that sound? Yeah. That's great. Good. One, two, three. So if you don't want like an accent or shadow vowel on the last note, then on the like last cadence cut off, then what you want to do is have a higher egg too. So yeah. Like, more like, gentle, more predictive. Yeah. Don't no yeah. sudden movements. You know, cars. Give people a chance. <laughs> okay. To be like ready. Try it again. Thank you. 
threes. One, two, three. So you notice she decided to go in four, and she did, and, and my advice is when you do a piece like this in four, that you have to do several things. First of all, your gesture has to be extremely gentle or it starts getting too metrical. Her gesture was very gentle. It never felt, it never, it, 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 she managed to mitigate the negativeness of the four, but get the benefit of showing more beats, right? And being in a little bit more, a little bit more control. In general, I, I say uh, you always want to conduct in the, the fewest beats possible. Like two is better than four, one is better than two, one is better than three, two is better than six, and so. But th th that's uh, meaning you know like six is not as good as right. But if you do choose to show more beats instead of fewer beats, then you have to be able to do it in a musical way. That doesn't make everything down, 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 down. And she really did that. I mean, and and so, and I was just writing in her thing that when you do it in four, you got to know when to go into two and not be into four. And then she did that at the Sumans. Sumans. And that's really the most obvious spot that we don't want. Sumans. I mean, you got all those beats for no reason except that you're moving your arm and you don't know what else to do. It's not musical. And so, she went into two there, and that I thought that that worked really, 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 really well. So that was great. Did we clap? Yeah. No. Okay, good. Sometimes I forget when I want to talk, and then people lose their one, two, three clap, and I feel bad. All right, so uh, let's go to the cutoff. Uh, do you want me to start at Sumans or? Let's just do the cutoff, and then we'll get okay. into it. More prep. Even, okay. Yeah. Just more height or more? No, uh, like, I love the sure. I love the movement you make on the cutoff, but we need more movement before we cut off for us. So this much yeah. and off. Okay. Watch this and. It's enormous length, right? It's not metrical. It's it's philosophical. It's and now, mm -hmm. as opposed to quit, yeah. right? Uh, and now our feature. Yeah. <laughs> Try that. There we go. Yeah, it's a, it, This is always an issue. Is how long that is. It's longer than you can imagine. It seems counterintuitive. Let's get in and do the, uh, let's not go back to Sumans, but let's start some other place. Maybe we can start uh, Peccatatorum, uh, starting with the bass in 41, and the tenor in 42, and the alto in 42.
Okay. Uh, she didn't prep us, and it was kind of a surprise. I think it kind of worked. What do you think? So what you ended up with was no accent at all on right. that. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so what, one thing, uh, and I'm a little behind schedule today, as you can see, so I talked too much at the beginning. I was, I was kind of in my defense waiting for somebody to come to class. Uh, is, is we do a really great job on those first four cues, and then we sort of don't do as great a job in the cues of the additional entry of those sections which people maybe don't need for musical reasons, but, or for entrance reasons, but we, we need for peace being interpreted reasons. You know what I'm saying? We want that new entrance. Dixie, Dixie, and Dixie, because that's the musical interpretation. Go, go right from the beginning. See if you can continue to give cues on entries of the theme after the first entrance. The whole first section now makes sense, and the cool thing is how those, those some of those entrances were coming on off the beat. I'm sure the composer understood, even though it may have not understood met meters and off the beat. They understood they were writing it not on strong beats, on weak beats. Dixitman, which shows that more emotion, and and putting that those those cues into our conducting, not because the people aren't able to come in without us, but to have the whole group understand the interpretation of that section. Does that make sense? Good, one, two, three. And Caitlin, we have reached the end of our class. I'm gonna cry. And we don't get to get together for a final exam, which is sad, because I would have probably brought coffee or something. <laughs>
One, two, three. Hey, Caitlin, because I didn't leave enough time for you, and I don't want to hold other people extra because their lives are busy and full of things, let's make a time this week, I know there's not much time, in which I can give you a quick session so that you get what you deserve and I don't make everybody else stay after class. Does that sound good? All right, thanks guys, good class today, great conducting, bye-bye. Sorry about that, but I think it would be better for us to just kind of uh, meet rather than have them all sit there and be sort of antsy while we're doing it. Okay.